right, so I'm pretty excited about this. I saw a YouTube video from Quiv the Lazy Geek um, about Nina software being able to run the Sea Star, and I wanted to give it a go and see if we could figure it out. Now, the reason that I'm interested in it is because if I can control the Sea Star from my laptop, for one, the screen is much bigger and I can get a lot more control because my eyesight just isn't fabulous anymore. So uh, the screen will be bigger. Another benefit will be that it'll make making videos quite a bit easier if I can just record it on my laptop where I can see things and not have to control things through my phone. And so this is, um, I'm gonna give it a go and see if I can make it work. And so I have gone to, uh, all I did is I go up into the Google search and I search for Nina software. And then it comes up here and it gives me this nighttime imaging, which is Nina. And I went, clicked on the download button right here. And I click on that and then it brings me up to this download page. There are some options here for different versions. I'm going to click on the very latest version. And I've already done this, um, but if you haven't done it yet, just click on this download Nina setup and um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked through all of the versions. Um, this is for a Windows machine. I'm not sure if it would work on a Mac or not. Somebody would have to give it a go and try it. But you just download it, and then it comes up in the download page. Um, let's see. And I downloaded it here, and then I um, was able to launch that download. And so uh, once, let me get into my download page and there it is right here. I double clicked on it and then it opens the compressed. This is a compressed zip folder that it downloaded. You double click on it, it opens and then you can just install it like you would other software. It'll come up and guide you through that process. And then once it's downloaded, it shows up with an icon like this on your computer. And now to launch it, all I do is click, double click it, and it takes just a brief minute to load it. And then I get here. Well, I, it's a little overwhelming, so be sure and watch that YouTube video um, from the Lazy Geek. And he does explain things. I did run through this, and so it is automatically loading some things. But when I got to this page, all I did is I clicked on this little equipment button up here in the top left-hand corner, and this box was empty. And so it was on no camera. And so when I first clicked on this download thing, it didn't show the C-Star camera here. It is doing that now because I've already loaded it. So now it's um, recognizing it and finding it. But when I first launched it, it said no camera. And all I had to do was click this little refresh scan for devices button right here and then click the download button. And then that C-Star Alpaca camera shows up. And then I click on that and that puts it right here. And then you click this button over here. It looks like a power button, but that's a connect button. So just click that. And then it comes up with a, a notification down here that it is connected and then it populates some things here. Now, for now, I'm just gonna leave all those the defaults until I learn what they all mean. But um, you do have to go in and do some other things so that it can connect. And so you have to tell it the filter wheel and you have to do that same thing. It comes up and it defaulted to no filter wheel, do the search for it and then select the C star and then connect it. And see, I get another success, it's connected. And then do the same thing for the focuser. And, you know, it's the same same thing. It's, it comes up and it defaults to no filter. But because I previously did it before I recorded this video, it is recognizing it. So just click on that and then click the connect. And then it comes up and it gives you a little notification that it is connected. And then the next one that um, he had us do is the mount and then connect that one to the C-Star Alpaca telescope mount. And let's go ahead and connect that one. And it just takes a second for it to connect. 
and then it populates all of the information there and it says success. Now I'm just going to close all of these little notifications. Now what's on the screen is what I want. This is how I'm going to control the C star. But what I want to do, um, let's see. I'm going to have to do some recording with my phone too and I'll superimpose that video. But I've got my C star set up on EQ mode. It's in the house, so it's it's not outside. It is raining buckets out there today for us. So I'm not going to be able to try this tonight. But I want to just make sure it was working. And so I have this C star set up on EQ mode. I didn't do any polar aligning because I'm not outside, but I did put it on EQ mode and set it to that degrees for my C star. And now uh, on the computer, I'm going to click one of these north, south, east, west buttons and see if it controls the C star. And you see it's moving. It might take a second to see it because it's hard to see. But it is moving that C star. And we can do it to the west and then it aligns it so it's going to the to the west. Um, um, you can also click the home button that is on the Nina. And when I click the home button in the bottom right hand corner, it puts it back to its starting position and closes the arm. And so it is controlling it. We can control the focusing and things on that video from the Lazy Geek. He, he does explain this a lot better than I could. Um, he has a lot more technical knowledge about these things than I do, but um, that is in there, in that video. So I will link his video in my description. Another thing I wanted to show you is on, I'm going to, let's see. Uh, let's go into the Sky Atlas. We're going up here into the Sky Atlas, the second one down. The equipment is the one where we attach everything to the Sea Star. And now the Sky Atlas is like looking for objects we want to look for. And so what kind of objects I'm going to say I want to look for a galaxy. I can tell it the altitude. Um, I can use this as a filter to find certain objects or what is available. I'm going to put it at about 40%. You know, this is just a trial run because I am indoors. I'm going to do that. And then you just scroll down here. You can tell it a size. Um, you can have it put it in ascending or descending order the list. You could tell it how many items you want it to list per page. You can um, filter it by constellations and coordinates brightness, those sorts of things. All I did is I clicked the galaxy right up there. That's the only thing that I have selected. Up here at the top, it does have you, um, you don't have to put these things in, but I did. I put the astronomical dusk. Now these are not necessarily astronomical dusk. You think of it as like the dusk of night, it's not necessarily the same. So it's you're not going to go in and put in here. Well, astronomical dusk is when it starts becoming dark enough for observing. And the astronomical dawn is when it becomes too light for you to image. And so that those are the figures that I put in in these two figures. So at 2037 in the evening is when I could start imaging. And at 556 AM is when I would want to stop. So I want to filter the objects that it's searching for between those times. And I want it to be something that's visible for a couple hours so that I can set it up in a plan and and image it for a while. And I'm just going to do a galaxy just because we're going to test this. And then I'm going to do search. And then the first one that comes up is M31. And it does tell me here that the transit is to the north. And the next one down is the Triangulum Galaxy. And that is to the south. And so I am going to, um, you see over here, it does give me some 
objects, I can add it to a sequence or set it for a framing assistant. If I click on that, it takes me over to a uh, object uh, filter finder thingy that um, it will help me do the framing on it. Um, it it's going to take a little bit of time here to load that, it looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and let's let's see if we can close that. It's it's doing the framing based on these image sources. And so let's do it with the EO, ESO Sky Survey, or you can use the NASA Survey. And what it does is it comes and populates that Andromeda galaxy that we selected, and it'll put it over here and show us the the framing of that object. And so let's see if I can wait long enough for it to do it here. It doesn't take super long, but a little longer than I was hoping for the video. Let's see. Okay, so there it populated it up and show it, so it's showing you that framing of that object. And so there are some useful things in there. Let's go back to that sky atlas up here, this Andromeda, and now let's superimpose another iPhone video and say that we want to go to that. So it's similar to the go to in the C Star app. And you see that it's rotating because it's going now to Andromeda. And you wouldn't know it from looking at any of this, but that's slewing to the north. So it's opening that arm. It's pointed to the north. And it rotates around just like it does when you're using the go to in the C Star app. And it rotates all the way around. It does it very similar to how it does in the C Star app. And then when it gets to where Andromeda is, it's going to stop. And that's where it's going to start imaging. And because I'm indoors, I can't give it a try. Uh, outside who knows i've got a lot of rain scheduled just like the um guy in the video he's having a lot of trouble and can't test it outside either but you can do that and then you can go into the imaging and see what it's imaging um not sure if it will show it now because it's indoors um to do it indoors i think you just click this cam or to see what it's imaging you click this camera thing over here and then i think it loads yeah it loads right here what it is viewing um so you're controlling it all from the computer instead of the c star app and it's just showing white because i'm indoors and my windows are shut there's lights on so it's really not gathering anything it's not seeing anything, but that's where it would show it. I did it a little earlier and I was able to get a black screen like in scenery mode, but this is looking, the, the field of view is looking for Andromeda. And so it's just not going to show anything because I'm indoors. But that's what we're going to give it a go when the weather gets better and see if we can try it. So there's a lot of advantages. Um, it looks like. Uh, we can control the filters that it's using. We can change the focus and have it do focusing. It, it sounds like we can do those in between, like if we set up a, a plan or we can change that or have it do auto focusing, and that would be very helpful. And so I'm excited to give this a try, but that's how you do it. So you, the first step, you're going to go up into once you've downloaded Nina, you're going to go into equipment and then load the C Star into the camera option, the filter wheel option, the focuser, and the mount. Those are the ones that, I, and I'm just copying what he did in his, his video to show you those and how to load those in there. 
Once you do, then you can go into the Sky Atlas, locate the object you want to go to, and, and they use the word slew instead of go to. Um, and it looks like you can add target to a sequence so that you can do the a plan uh, similar to what's in the C-Star app. And you can have it do some of the focusing and things in between from what I understand. But that's how you do it. That's how you locate an object and how you get the telescope to respond to the computer screen instead of just your app. And so there might be some advantages to using this. We can change some of the settings, um, the framing, all of those sorts of things, things we're going to have to play around with. It just makes um, us have a little bit more control over the C Star app. app. Um, the limitations in the app are maybe uh, fixed with controlling it this route. And there is a lot more things to learn. You would have to um, probably get a little bit of knowledge about the um, jargon that is used. Um, they it will do the plate solving it can do the drizzle those sorts of things things that are maybe a little bit more advanced but just doing this small simple thing we can probably image some objects and controlling it with the computer is a lot more convenient for especially if your eyesight's not great the iphone screens are pretty small i have gotten a tablet so that the screen is bigger but you know, there are some limitations with that. And so I'm looking forward to trying this, trying a plan so that we can autofocus in between the objects in the plan. That's another advantage I'm I'm looking forward to trying. But um thought you would enjoy seeing how to find an object using Nina. Uh we're hoping everybody else is having better luck and clearer skies than we're having. Um uh, but thanks for watching.